Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, November 26th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Ahead, growing up in her native India, Sukanya Mani took her parents' advice and studied biochemistry in college, but she held on to her artistic impulses. I was strongly encouraged to study the sciences, but um, you cannot take the artist out of the person, no matter how hard you try. (laughs) St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin talks with Mani about how she reflects scientific concepts with her intricately designed paper sculptures. First, the news. Governor Mike Parson, along with the mayors of some of Missouri's largest cities, have come up with three priorities to address urban gun violence and crime. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jacqueline Driscoll reports, the ideas follow a meeting yesterday at the state capitol. The group wants better access to mental health care, as well as additional funding for witness protection programs. Specifically with firearms, though, they all agree they want to see restrictions for minors, violent offenders, and domestic abusers. The mayors and Parson called these common sense reforms, and Parson says he's prepared to try to convince Republicans in the state legislature who typically aren't in favor of gun restrictions. I don't think they're extremely tough ask, uh, but I've got to go out there and sure make my case to the legislators that said, hey, are you willing to support this? Parson increased patrols on state highways to combat violence in St. Louis, which began in October. Mayor Lida Krusen says there have been roughly 300 arrests, 28 of those for felony charges. In Jefferson City, I'm Jacqueline Driscoll, St. Louis Public Radio. Missouri is increasing the number of calls it picks up on its adult abuse and neglect hotline. As Aviva Okuson Haberman tells us, the state has launched a new online reporting tool. The hotline only answered half of the 92,000 calls it received in 2018. That's according to a joint investigation by KBIA and the Columbia Missourian. This month, it answered 77 percent. Division of Senior and Disability Services Director Jessica Back says the hotline is also now redirecting callers who are simply looking for information about local resources, not calling to report abuse. We wanted to make sure that every call was able to be and every concern was able to be reported. The attorney general recommended the change, along with better data collection practices after investigating the hotline. I'm Aviva and haberman The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency will break ground today on its new West headquarters in North St. Louis. The campus, dubbed Next NGA West, will be built on the corner of Jefferson and Cass Avenues in the St. Louis Place neighborhood. Major construction of the nearly $2 billion project will start in the spring. It should wrap up in 2023. This new facility will replace the NGA's current St. Louis campus, which is in South City. More than 3,000 employees are expected to move into the new location in 2025. We have several reporters and editors who make the Gateway possible each weekday. We'd all like to know what you think. Email feedback at stlpublicradio.org and rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. Artists and scientists can often use different lenses to look at the world, but Sukanya Mani taps into her training in the sciences to inform her work as an artist. She folds and cuts paper into intricate patterns, often crafting abstract designs to represent scientific concepts. A show of her work just opened at the Kranzberg Arts Center. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin visited with her last week as she finished preparing her paper creations. In her basement studio at her home in Baldwin, Sukanya Mani is surrounded by large white sheets of Tyvek, the synthetic paper builders use to help protect buildings from the elements. Mani uses an X-Acto knife to cut intricate patterns out of the paper. What I'm doing right now is cutting deep into the piece itself and creating long gashes and long lines. Those lines are curvy, forming patterns, and some of her pieces resemble delicate lattice work. When she's done cutting, she takes the flat paper and twists and turns it and dangles it from the ceiling, letting gravity bend her work into its finished shape. I was listening to a podcast the other day about 
how light bends around gravity. And one of the things that I'm doing with this piece is when you move the paper or you warp the paper three-dimensionally, you can see that these lines bend down. And that's my artistic sense of how light bends with gravity. On the wall of her studio, she's taped a row of photos that inspire her. They're not of mountains or the ocean or a landscape. Most are from the CERN laboratory in Switzerland, home to a particle accelerator that physicists use to study the tiniest building blocks of matter. The photos of their experiments reveal intricate shapes she calls beautiful. She recently met with a Princeton astrophysicist after attending his guest lecture on dark matter at Washington University. It was a reminder of her school days back in her native India, where she grew up and earned a degree in chemistry and biochemistry. She always had artistic tendencies, but her parents nudged her in a different direction. I was strongly encouraged to study the sciences. From their point of view, I can understand. They just wanted to make sure I had a good financial future. But um, you cannot take the artist out of the person, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> she moved to the St. Louis area 20 years ago. She didn't have her own work permit at first, and that gave her the perfect opportunity to get back in touch with her artistic side. Now she does some teaching, consults as an arts administrator, and makes art. She'll spend months on a piece and applies scientific rigor to her process. She sets a timer for 25-minute work sessions, then takes a break to protect against carpal tunnel syndrome and remain focused. One mistake sends a new piece to the scrap heap. Paper and paper cutting is very unforgiving. There's really no going back. If you make a mistake, you just have to work on a new piece. Because once you cut the paper out, there's no way you can put it back in, in a way that looks like it was always meant to be. Much as time only goes forward. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> time moves in one direction and so do paper cuts. <laughs> a few days later, Mani is installing her show at the Kranzberg Arts Center. Two of her artist friends are helping her hang the pieces. These two look good. There's enough light passing through it, and it's looking, uh, in tr it, it has an interesting formation. I think it falls organically the way it is. Yeah. And so I will add one more piece here to tie these three together. Because after this is the last the part of the composition process, the shaping and hanging these carefully cut sheets of paper seeing what shadows they cast on the white walls, how they look from different angles. She's been so deliberate throughout the process of creation, but here at the end, she says, she welcomes the element of chance. And they have a mind of their own. After a certain point, it's like a living organism. It just doesn't want to listen to you. It's like a child. <laughs> some life experience teaches me that you should just let it do what it wants to do at some point. It's an exercise in accepting some amount of chaos, even when you think you have your art down to a science. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. Our David Casares edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.